Hello everybody, hope you're doing fantastically well. It's Connor here. We're back in the car. You can't believe it. We're back in the car. Shout out to you OGs. If you new subscribers haven't experienced Connor in the car, this is a feature that we've done for years, mostly during the transfer window, but not since I've been in Manchester. So here we go. We're back with a brand new car video. It's just so I can get quick, incisive news out to you guys as quickly as possible. If you haven't checked the five things that you may have missed from the Nottingham Forest game, please go do check that out. It's nearly on 11,000 views from yesterday. So thank you so much for your substantial support. I will also say the debrief is flying from last night as well. If you like your longer format shows, if you like uh, an American and two Englishmen talking pure waffle, please go and check that out. And if you want some bonus Leeds United content, check that out. Check the Patreon link, which will be in the description below. We will be filming a Generation Leeds. That will be out this evening. The exclusive bonus Patreon members get access to that one. So let's get into today's news. So it's not really news, everyone. Today, I just kind of want to chat about everything that we learned from the Forest game and, and, and what Grazia is going to do to put all this into action and, and how he's going to effectively make Leeds United a stronger proposition for Crystal Palace. Now, I think it would be highly naive for the fan base to think that Crystal Palace is going to be an easy game. Now, listen... Crystal Palace out of the bottom eight are top of that bottom eight, if you will, 12th on 30 points. I watched them versus Leicester. That was a demolition job. Um, I don't think for a long time, a long, long time, I've seen two of the bottom teams compete and won, and, and, and it'd be such a one-sided game. Palace absolutely battered Leicester. Now, Leicester is going to be a tough game for Leeds United. It's going to be a tough game. I still believe for a lot of teams in this division, even though they are 19th, I don't think they'll finish 19th. I think Leicester will be fine. But with the likes of Ian Acho, Madison, Harvey Barnes, Jamie Vardy, Tielemans, etc. They are absolutely no pushovers. So I think when you contextualise in, when, when you're looking at the whole pie, this Crystal Palace game is going to be tough. Now, the advantage that Leeds United have, of course, is Wilf Zaha is going to be out for a month. That not only is good for the Leeds United game, but once again, it's good for the whole circle. It's when you're looking at the the, the, the whole, um, you, you know, the, the, the whole fixtures remaining and, and Crystal Palace are going to be without him. He's a talisman. When they went 10 games without a win, that was the big struggle. It's because the connectivity between Wilf Zaha and Michael Elise, the connectivity between Wilf Zaha and Eberich Eze is absolutely critical for Crystal Palace's offensive threat and for them to be able to really gain momentum and, and curate decent chances and finish decent chances. So I think overall... Him being out for this game against Leeds United is going to be monumental. And I think that is a big plus for Leeds United. And that's why I'm going in to this game feeling very encouraged and very confident. Now, if I'm Javi Grazia, what do I do? Because as I've just mentioned previously, this is a tougher game than Nottingham Forest. I think we all know that. I think this is the game where, for me... It's not going to be a draw. I think it could go either way. I really do. I don't think Leeds were mesmeric the other night. Did I think we were better than Nottingham Forest? 100%. Do I rate Nottingham Forest? Absolutely not. You guys can go check out my season predictions we did during the international break. I've actually predicted Forest finishing bottom and I'm going to stick with that. So we've got to really take the yardstick a little bit higher than what Nottingham Forest you know, bring to the table. So this is going to have to be an elevated performance from Leeds United. I expect the midfield to be as good as they were against Nottingham Forest. I think winning any midfield battle in any game is absolutely essential in, in, in you know, comp first first off competing and then second of all, dominating. And, and, and I think that is where, you know, the engine room, that's where the tone is set, the tempo is set. So when we're looking at changes, what do I think Javi Grazia would, will do this weekend? And do I agree? Now, there are three positional changes that could happen in this game. Willie Nyonto, he was left out of the Forest game. How long can you leave Willie Nyonto out? Now, the debate is, at this moment in time, you cannot take Jack Harrison out. Jack Harrison, under Javi Grazia, has been immense. Um, and when I say immense, I don't mean overall performances. I'm not talking about Mark Rocker the other night. But what I am talking and, 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 you know, Sinistera for 70 minutes. But what I'm talking about is his output at the minute, you know, his assists, his goals. This is what I was talking about when, I'm, when I've discussed Jack before and I've talked about him clustering. Well, this time he's getting goals and assists. 
which is which is uh, really unique when it comes to Jack Harrison's clusters for me. Um, now he needs to keep that up because I don't want to keep referring to that C word. I want it to be a consistent pattern of play. I need Jack Harrison to have those levels of performances against the Crystal Palace because the opponent is going to be much better. The fullbacks are going to be better than Harry Toffolo and, and Nico Williams. Harry Toffolo is a championship player, and Nico Williams, who definitely isn't a right back. So the the the, the fullbacks in this in this Palace game are going to be very very much elevated in terms of in terms of quality so we need Jack to have a good game now it comes back to the conversation of what do you do with Willie Nyonta and we'll discuss this of course in the preview which will be out tomorrow but there is a question over Brendan Aronson and that question in my head has not gone but how do Leeds fit Willie Nyonta in if we're playing a three in and behind the striker how do we fit Willie Nyonta in? And, and the simple answer to that is Leeds can't. So for me, Brendan Aronson does start this game. And, you know, the I keep going on about the energy, the endeavour, the effort. It's always there with Brendan Aronson. And maybe that will play its part in this game. I do not think the guy is any good on the ball whatsoever. I think that has got to develop big time. Otherwise, I think Leeds United are going to take that that ruthless streak and improve it with that profile of player in the in the summer, which I think I would completely be on board with because I think you can have a 20 to 25 to 30 million pound player on the bench. That's what teams like Aston Villa have. You know, if we want to be in that stratosphere, if we want to be in that conversation going forward, if we do stay in the Premier League, we need to have players of that quality on the bench. Now, I think Brendan Aronson is a bench Premier League player, but as of right now, as of right this second, we don't have a profile to replace him in that central attacking midfield high number eight role. Unless Leeds are to go to a flat three in midfield and play maybe Rasmus Christensen in midfield alongside Mark Rocker and 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 um, Weston McKenney, which we saw in the which we essentially saw in the Arsenal game. Do I think Grassi is going to do that? I don't. So I think Willie Nonso is going to be out for this game. I don't think he's going to start for Leeds United. I think he's going to be an impact sub. So that's one of the questions which is out of the out of the conversation. The second question in the conversation: What do you do with Luke Ayling? Now, football is based on a meritocracy. I've always said that on this channel. Football is based on performance, performance, performance. Have you performed well in those three games? If you have, you get that next start. If you perform well in two games, you get that next start. That's what I believe anyway. You know, players in form are players you want to start. Luke Ayling, for me, is extremely lucky that Wilf Zaha isn't in this game because I feel that any time Luke Ayling sets his sights on a Premier League football pitch, I think the opposition do target him. I think we saw that against Arsenal. I think we saw that against Nottingham Forest. A lot of people were saying, you know, what was the game plan, including myself, but re-watching the game back, I felt in those first 15 minutes where they had a marginal strangle stranglehold on the game, it was obvious where they were targeting. They were pressing Luke Ayling's touch, pressing high on him as a, as a, as a unit. That's what it felt like at points. You know, Emmanuel Dennis, you'd then get the central midfielder Froiler also applying a pressure as well. And, and, and Brennan Johnson almost coming over as well to apply a pressure on that sort of right side of Leeds' defence. It was evident for me that there was a press on Luke Ayling. Arsenal did the same. Now, Luke Ayling needs to be replaced in the summer. Our right-hand side is embarrassing. Um, uh, and that is that is a harsh thing to say. It's a really harsh thing to say. But for me, even though his performances have been increased in Rasmus Christensen, and when I say increase, it's been cameos and, and, and goals in certain phases of games, which does depend on the game state. Teams been knackered. Certain teams been one, two, three up whatever. Um, Rasmus has come on and, and done well. But does he start in a Premier League game over Luke Ayling? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. And that right-hand side is Leeds United's glaring weakness. And I think this is where statisticians, and um, people in analytics, scouts, they will target Leeds United on that side because it is very vulnerable. Luke Ayling, when pressed, is not resistant and he struggles to deal with um, you know, a, a winger running at him and being direct as well. He hasn't got the pace. He hasn't got many attributes, which you would say is, is the modern-day right-back. Neither is Rasmus Christensen. So so for that question, I'm going to keep Luke Ayling in there, but we need insurance right there. That's probably where you need Jack Harrison to literally be helping Luke Ayling out in this game because who knows, if Michael Elise goes to that side, 
if you know you've 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 got a, a Dwight Mitchell bombing on down that side as well. I'm not 100 sure if he's going to be fit for this one, but if if he is, Luke Allen is going to have problems because he just simply cannot deal with opposition pace and oppositions being direct. I thought in pockets he did he did okay the other night, but in the first 15 20 minutes he was the cause of their goal in my opinion. Again, which after the Arsenal game you could lead about three or four goals in in consecutive games down to Luke Allen, and I did feel as well in those first sort of 10 minutes. Nottingham Forest had three semi-counter attacks, which included the corner as well, which Emmanuel Dennis hit the post on. That was Luke Aylin's fault as well. If you're doing that against a side who are bottom of the form table away from home, you are going to struggle and you are going to concede chances against the best positional players in the world, the wingers in the Premier League, consistently. So for me, in an ideal world, he would be out, but I do not rate Rasmus Christensen. And I don't, in terms of starting a Premier League game for Leeds, I think he's come on in certain, as we've seen against Wolves, as we've seen against Arsenal. Um, he's, I think when he's when he's when he scored, for example, against Arsenal, I think the game state has been very, very different. You know, Leeds have been behind, players are tiring. I don't think it was a consistent performance against Arsenal, even though he's asked to play out of position. And and your Wolves, he came on and scored, but but yeah, he, he wasn't involved for most of the game. So I think over ninety minutes, you got to stick with Luke Aylin, unfortunately. Up front is the key question. So two of which I think we're going to have to stick with Brendan Aronson. I think we're going to have to stick with Luke Aylin. And for the second, uh, the final position, I should say, is Rodrigo or Patrick Bamford. Now, I was highly critical of Patrick Bamford the other night. I think a lot of people use the yardstick of he's occupying defenders as an almost badge of honour. That, for me, is the bare minimum. You know, if you are a height of six foot two and you have six foot one, six foot two defenders behind you, I expect you to occupy the fullbacks. Now, what I do expect you to do as well is when you are in the game, it's been incisive. It's passing the ball within two touches. It's been able to knock the ball on efficiently as well. It's knowing when to pass, when to hold on to the ball. I think Luke Ayling is very, very, very... Uh, sorry, uh, Patrick Bamford is very, very inconsistent when it comes to that. And I think you saw that against Nottingham Forest. I thought there were several times where you had Leeds midfielders running off him and he held on to the ball too long. It was bouncing off him. And I think if I genuinely believe if Nottingham Forest had a competent back line and the ball bounced off Patrick Bamford, they'd be able to move through the thirds and really cause Leeds problems. And it was lucky that Mark Rocker and Weston McKenney were on their game so much the other night that they could disrupt that centre-back bringing the ball out. And I thought Forest were a little bit naive to that, to be quite honest with you, because I felt in the first half in particular they were nicking the ball off Patrick Bamford consistently so Rodrigo or Bamford <sighs> Rodrigo is the finisher but I still think even when you saw Rodrigo come on there's problems you know that that he, he's not the full package when it comes to the striker he really isn't but when we are going up against a Crystal Palace side this weekend who, you know, how, how are we going to be, be playing? Are we going to be trying to, you know, go direct and hit the front man? If we do hit the front man, it's probably going to have to be a Patrick Bamford to occupy the defenders, which I'm not saying he doesn't do, by the way, but you've also got to occupy the defenders successfully and consistently successfully. Um, I don't think Rodrigo does that. So I think Leeds, if we are playing the channel ball, I think if we are playing to feet and Rodrigo's naturally going to be coming deep, that is, that's, that, that's, the, that's the man you start. But for this one, for me... I would stick with Patrick Bamford, even though I've just been speaking uh, about him and, and the other night and how I thought he was pretty poor with his hold-up play. And that is why Sinistera started against Arsenal. Everybody's a false nine because Sinistera's touch is miles ahead of Patrick Bamford. Technically, he's miles better than Patrick Bamford. So he can link the defence uh, and the attack in the midfield and the attack. That is what you need. You have to have that in games like this. And to be fair to Bamford, he won a couple of free kicks. So I'm looking at that for this Crystal Palace game. Um, he's performed okay against them before as well. So I am going to start Patrick Bamford. Now, a little a little curveball would be if you're starting Rodrigo over Brendan Aronson. That potentially is an option playing as a little bit of a shadow striker in and behind Patrick Bamford. So on the face of it, I am keeping the same side as tomorrow night. I hope that's filled you in with a little bit of what I think, everybody. Let me know what you think in detail. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I've said? Keep it respectful in the chat below. We'll be back with your preview tomorrow, everybody. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you in a bit.